Tiffany of Tip Stitch and this is my recap video of my second quarter make. So we're about to go through pretty quickly everything I made from April through June. First up is Vogue 8977. I love this pattern. I've made it once before. The time I made it before it was a little too small. Um, in the biceps for me because I have pretty big biceps. Uh, it used to be because that was muscle, now it's more so because it's fat. But anyway, um, I've also put on a few pounds so that one doesn't fit anymore. But I wanted to make another one because I love this. I think it's a great top for spring, summer, and fall because I made it out of this really lightweight fabric that I picked up from L.A. Finch a year or two ago. Um, you can see links to everything in the blog post, tipstitch.com. But I just wanted to show this because I love the flowiness of it. You have the pleats. It has the full sleeves with the sort of blues on detail. And then the back has this cute V-back with the accents of the buttons. I always have the hardest time finding good buttons. So if anybody has a good button retailer, let me know. I usually end up just going to my basic Joann's for buttons. Um, but I'm sure there's some place where I can get much uh, better buttons. Now that I've been getting better over my fear of button holes, I need more buttons. But I love the button detail on the back of this. I also really love this floral print and I just think that open back with the V is adorable. So this is Vogue 8977. This was in my Springs uh, plans video and it is done. McCall 7745 was one of my favorite uh, sews of this season, I guess. Um, I did have some trouble with the bodice. I definitely would recommend that you muslin the bodice of 7745 if it's something that you plan on sewing this summer or in the future. Um, I also read of a few other bloggers such as Natasha from uh, Dressing Dressmaker Depocles and uh, a couple of other people said they had some issues with the fit of the bodice and I definitely did. I had to take it in a bit at the sides it still didn't close as well as I would like. Uh, I finished it because I was making this for an event, but I really do wish that I had done some more adjustments. I'm debating how much effort it would be to pick it apart and make those tweaks because I really love this fabric and this look so much, but we'll see if that happens. Anyway, like I said, this is McCall 7745, and this is a fully uh, functioning wrap dress, and I chose to make it reversible. So mine looks different than a lot of other versions of McCall 7745 because if you look up that pattern, it has the flounce. Um, so the reason why I did that is because I came across this beautiful denim cotton fabric that was solid denim on one side and denim is sort of off-white stripe on the other. And I love making reversible pieces because I like two-for-one looks. I also love a wrap dress, which is just suitable for having um, two sides anyway because you don't have to figure out tricky closures or anything like that. You can just wrap it the reverse way and have a totally different look. I have all the details of how I made this reversible on my blog, tipstitch.com. If you want to take a look at that for some inspiration, I'm just going to switch this fairly quickly here. It might be a little sloppy so that you can see it's fully reversible. And this side is the denim blue side. And then on the other side, we have the stripes. So I'm really proud of this, except for I should have done the fit a little bit better, but I really do like McCall 7745. Just don't forget to uh, muslin that bodice. I've added a new pattern to my tried and true patterns, my TNT list, and that pattern is Butterick 6330. That pattern actually has five views, I believe, a romper, a jumpsuit, a short dress or a knee length dress, um, and a maxi dress as well as a blazer. So far I've made the jumpsuit and the maxi dress and I have to say I love them both. They fit great straight out the box and I think it's a pretty good easy simple pattern and it allows you to play with some graphic prints of knits um, and I think that's pretty fun. So the first one that I made was actually for my monthly post over at Fabric Mark Fabrics on their Fabricista blog. So you can check that out at blog.fabricmarkfabrics.com um, but I liked it so much I decided to try the dress because I made the uh, jumpsuit the first time. So I bought this fabric also from Fabric Mark Fabrics. It was a $1 a yard pre-cut knit so it was a great deal. Um, I think it only takes about three yards or two and a three quarter yards maybe to make this uh, maxi dress 
and it's comfortable. It's just a really simp simple tank dress that has a bodice and a skirt with an elastic casing um, at the waist. Uh, it fits really great out of the box. I think I may have shortened it a tad, but I'm only 5'5", five five, so that may be why. The back has this split back with the loophole button closure. Um, if I make the dress again, I won't do that. I talk about it in the blog, um, but there's no reason to have it in the dress because it's stretchy and you can just pull this whole thing over your head. It's a nice detail nonetheless. Um, I had a cute little navy button that worked because it was the same color of that navy stripe. So that was all right, but it wasn't really necessary. Now, again, I liked it so much, I've made it three times. So I made the first one for the blog post, I made this one for my blog, and then I made the jumpsuit again. This one is out of an icy white knit that I had had in my stash for quite a while. I can't even remember what I was supposed to be making with it, but I thought it was a nice big bold print that would work well for this jumpsuit. Now, in my haste to turn them out rather quickly, I didn't do the best job of pattern matching right here along the crotch seam, but I don't care. It's a busy print and I still wear it. Um, now with this one, you do need the button with the slit back because it's a jumpsuit and that's the only way you can get into it. But it's still basically the same concept of the same tank bodice as you use for the maxi dress, just with the pants, of course, to make it a jumpsuit. This does have a pleat and a sides uh, pocket. So I love anything um, that has pockets. The maxi dress has a pocket too, but it's an inseam. And this is a front like slant pocket. So I just really like that. These are both super comfortable. I've worn them so much this spring and summer. Um, they are my go-to with just navy flip-flops. Um, and I get complimented when I wear them out. So that's always great. If you watched my spring sewing plans video, then you saw this fabric and I asked you at the end of that video, should I make McCall 7577 or McCall 7755? And I think the vast majority of you picked 7577, which is what I made. Um, I think there were a few votes that came in afterwards that were for 7755, so that might be in the lead if you go look at the comments now. But at the time when I cut it, McCall 775, uh, 7577, this one was in the lead, so that's what I sewed. I made this before in the shorts version with the long sleeve, but I had been wanting to make the pants version, the jumpsuit sleeveless version, and that's what we have here. Um, I'm really pleased with it. You guys were definitely right. I ended up using another fabric for 7755, and so I have both in my closet now, and I'm very happy. Um, this one's really comfortable. It has this surplice uh, wrap bodice, which is really great for getting in and getting out of the jumpsuit. You don't have to worry about a zipper or a button or any other kind of closures here. With that being said, this neckline is a little wide, so I safety pin it. You could also resolve that with a snap just to make sure that you don't have any uh, wardrobe malfunctions while you're wearing it. Um, I also did do the sash belt because I like that look of the matching uh, belt with the outfit. It has the inseam pockets, which is always great. Uh, great wide legs, and this is just a really easy sew. It's also a really um, comfortable piece to wear. Um, it has a cute little back detail, which I'm not gonna show here because I have this all pinned up on my little plastic dress thing, um, where you could use maybe a lace or a mesh to give like a little see-through look on the back on the inset, um, and it's really cute. So I would definitely recommend this pattern. So this is McCall 7755. I did get around to making it, like I said. I made it in this black Aztec fabric that I purchased either here in Atlanta from Fabric World in um, Stone Mountain or from Michael Levine's in LA. I know those are two totally opposite places, but I bought a lot of this black Aztec print fabric um, in sort of this rayon chelly um, a couple of years ago when I guess the Aztec print was really popular. I still really love it. Um, so I had some in my stash. I probably had two, three, maybe even four pieces of similar prints in my stash because apparently I was attracted to it at the time. Um, so I'm not sure where I purchased it, but I'm sure you can find it just about anywhere. I uh, love this jumpsuit. It's something that's so simple but looks so cute on. You can dress it up or you can dress it down. I want to make the shorts version of this if I can knock that out before the summer's over. 
Um, I'd like to make another one of these. I can see myself wearing it in the fall just with a jacket or something. Um, you can wear it with the sash belt or without. Either way looks cool. Uh, if you have a nice defined waist, which I don't exactly, but if you have one, if you have that hourglass figure, this would be gorgeous with the tie to show that off um, and show off the rest of your shape. It does have a fairly deep V, if you can see here, like a little split opening, a little keyhole opening in the front, but you can either sew that up further if you want to be more modest or when I go out, I wear it with like a little bandeau bra, like one of those just like elastic sort of strapless, um, not really strapless, not hook and closure, just the elastic sort of pull on or pull over bra. Um, so that gives me the coverage that I like. It is also low in the underarm, so it stops for any side boobage from sewing if you uh, wear that as well. But you could of course just sew that up higher um, or cut that piece a little higher when you're cutting out um, the piece. It's really simple. There's just three pieces. There's the front, the back, and then the necktie, and then the belt if you want to add the belt. Um, I just love the way this turned out. It has the same detail in the back here where you have the opening slit. The back's a little lower. Um, I don't mind showing off the back, especially the center, so you know, no uh, side wings there. But it's really cute. I love this, love this, love this. I'm happy that I used that blue Aztec print for the previous one, 7577, and used this black Aztec print for this one, 7755, because I think the vertical lines of this print just really elongate the whole body when you're wearing it. A vertical print, vertical stripes would look really nice for this very column, uh, statuesque sort of silhouette. So. Um, I'm really happy with this one as well, and I think I probably have enough jumpsuits now. So this little white dress is the last look that I have that I talked about in my spring sewing plans video. This was a copycat dress from Urban Outfitters that Mimi G wore on Instagram as one of her looks of the day. Uh, I love a little white dress, especially if it's linen for summer. And I went to the Urban Outfitters website and they actually still had the dress in stock. They had it in a couple of colors and even in a print. But I looked at it and said, I can make that. So I made it instead. I know a lot of people always think that if you sew for yourself that you save a lot of money, which can be true, especially in those jumpsuits that I showed you in that maxi dress where I got those fabrics for just $1 a yard uh, during Fabric Mark's pre-cut sale. But sometimes you have to pay a little more for your fabric. This linen is actually from Fabric Mart. It's their designer linen. I love this linen. And it's $24.99 a yard. Um, I did buy it on sale, so I didn't quite pay that. Oh, actually, no. I used this for my blog post, so this was free to me. But um, it still didn't end up cheaper, really, than the dress had I just bought it. I think the dress was $45 or $50 from Urban Outfitters. Um, but I think it was a linen blend, like a linen and a rayon mix, which I don't mind. I love a linen blend, but if I can make it myself, why not? So um, I actually hacked McCall 7688 to make this dress. That dress is actually a knit dress, so I had to get a bit creative with what I needed to do to make sure that this fit. I actually made a muslin for this, which if you know me, I never, never do. But that's how concerned I was about the fit, especially like I said, because that was a knit pattern that I was making with the woven fabric. So I wanted to make sure I had cut it large enough and had enough ease. I also had to play with the um, armhole here and get the right length sleeve and whatever. But once I got the bodice cut, I just actually cut two strips of fabric of the linen to make the arm hem ruffle and the bottom hem ruffle. And then of course I just made a little self tie belt. But this was easy once I drafted the pattern, and I'm probably going to make a few more of these. I finished off the neckline, I think, with bias tape. I talk about all these details in the blog post. Um, and let's see, I have a loop and button closure in the back because I wanted something that I could just pull over. So this just has an open back and a thread loop and a button, which is actually how the dress looks from Urban Outfitters as well. Um, so this is another one of my favorite looks for the summer, but I am one of those people who are really guilty of sewing with white or buying white and then not wearing it for fear of getting it dirty. The day that I actually went out to shoot this for the blog, because this was a make that I did for my monthly post over at Fabric Mart Fabrics, 
a vlog I had a lipstick incident where I actually got lipstick liquid lipstick all over my hands how I managed not to get any on this dress is a miracle thank you God because my whole right hand was pink like just pink and I had already changed in the car to put the dress on it was a mess but I managed to get out take the pictures get out of the dress without getting any of that lipstick on the dress but that proves to you right there why I hate wearing white out I love it it's gorgeous I just hate wearing it out um so I haven't actually worn this except for to wear for the pictures but I am going to wear it somewhere before the summer's over so this is a hack that I call it my I can make that um so this is the hack of McCall 7688 all the details are on the blog While I'm on my Fabric Mark Fabricista guest post, let me go ahead and cover everything that I made this quarter. So the white linen dress was April and this denim look was May. Um, I actually saw a line drawing of this pattern, which is McCall 6362, was an out of print older pattern, probably from like the 80s or the 90s. Uh, well, probably from the 90s. And I stumbled upon the line drawing on it, I think on Pinterest. And when I went to the Facebook group, the McCall's Pattern Facebook group and asked someone if they could tell me what pattern this is. Someone was license, nice enough to tell me that it was McCall's 6362. When I searched McCall's 6362, I actually really hated the look on the pattern envelope of the model actually in the pattern, but I still thought something could be done with the line drawing as a basis. So I decided to go with something really simple, this denim tinsel from Fabric Mart, to make this romper. Um, you already know I love jumpsuits. This one had a side pocket, it had the spaghetti straps, it had the wrap bodice, pretty much all the things I like in a jumpsuit pattern. This one though did have tapered legs because it is more of that 90s look. This make couldn't have been more on time because I actually went to my 20 year class reunion in May, it was actually Memorial Day weekend, and we had a throwback 90s party. So I slapped this baby on because I felt like it gave sort of house party vibes with the fanny pack and some heels and had a blast rocking out to my uh, 90s music from back in the day. But this pattern was a really easy sew. I will say I did have some fit issues in the bodice, but I tend to have those issues with uh, woven fabrics that have this sort of loose crossover bodice look. Same thing I had with McCall 7745. So I have to learn my body and tweak that to make sure that that works okay in the future. But as long as I take it in a little, I think in this case, I actually just cut the size too big. I overestimated, or underestimated, wait, I overestimated how much ease I needed for the bodice. Uh, the pants fit fine. So um, this is a look that I think I'm gonna try again in a different fabric. So for June, I decided to go all in for summer and make a swimsuit and cover up um, because why not? June is the month, the kids are out of school, you're traveling, you're hanging out by the pool, you're going to the beach. Why not go ahead and get a brand new swimsuit? Um, so this one is actually Simplicity 1116, which is an out of print Mimi G pattern for Simplicity. I don't know why, because it's a really great pattern. So I've done this uh, wrap front, which I think was view A, in this gorgeous chartreuse swimwear knit. Um, I lined it with a mesh and it turned out great. I didn't have to make, uh, I don't think any modifications at all except for playing with the strap length. Of course, that's always a thing. Um, I know a lot of people seem to be a little hesitant or scared of sewing swimsuits, but I actually find swimsuits to be really easy. I give some tips and tricks on how to make it easier on the blog post for Fabric Mart. So go and check that out if you're interested. Um, but if you sew with knits of any kind, I really think you're fine with swimsuit knits. Um, if you know how to use a zigzag stitch or your serger, uh, if you have a cover uh, stitch machine especially, like this is a breeze. I actually finished most of this on my serger and just on my sewing machine with the zigzag stitch hem. Um, they're really not that difficult and they take up so little fabric. I think this was just a yard of fabric and I have enough left over that I plan on making Miss Socialite a little tank kini of her own. So definitely don't be afraid of swimwear. Um, the other thing that I made was this cover-up because I wanted the whole lounging by the beach vacation sort of feel. And this gorgeous bright blue um, chiffon was in stock at the time. I believe it's sold out now. 
at Fabric Mart and I just loved how bold and bright the floral pattern was. And there's a little bit of green in here in the foliage that sort of pulled out the chartreuse here for the swimsuit. So I wore these two together and this is Simplicity 8657. It's actually a pullover caftan pattern, but I hacked it by just leaving the front open um, so and putting side slits on the sides so you could have a little leg detail here. And this was really a very straightforward sew. Showing, sewing with chiffon is actually very much more stressful for me than sewing with swimwear knits. I'm a person who actually prefers to sew with knits. Lightweight fabric to drive me crazy. And that's one of the reasons why I went for this really simple caftan for this cover up. I didn't want anything where I had to do any more seams than I had to. I actually cut the back of this on the fold instead of two separate back pieces to eliminate that seam. So basically I just had to do a shoulder seam, the two side seams, and a little hemming all the raw edges. But that wasn't as bad as having to piece together several pieces. So this was my last look for the quarter for my fabric mark post, which was this beautiful swimsuit and this lovely cover up. I really enjoy pattern testing. So the next few patterns that you're going to see are patterns that I tested for different companies. And the first up are these cute spring break shorts from Mod Kid. Miss Socialite loves clothes like any other little girl. So anytime that I can pattern test something for her, it's a win for both of us. And these spring break short patterns were no exception. They come in three different views. So you have an angled ruffle, a ruffle, and then just a straight short set. So if you have a little girl or even a little boy, if you want to make the straight version in your life, these shorts are a great thing to pick up. I have pattern tested for Mod Kid before, both the Leilani romper and the Wren dress, which was so cute. It was a mix of a knit and a woven. So she really comes up with unique and innovative patterns for kids, which is sometimes hard to find. So definitely get, check them out. I'll put a link in the bio. Now for a pattern test that I sewed for myself. This is the Tie Dye Diva Mermaid Maxi. This is a cute skirt that's super comfy, easy to sew, and you could wear through the fall, actually, because of the length. It is a maxi. So it comes in two views. You have either the straight view that has a slit. You can take that slit as high or as low as you want. Um, but it also has this cute mermaid one, which is, of course, the one that I decided to make that has this little fishtail mermaid kick at the bottom. Um, this is actually a really easy sew. It's just pretty much a six paneled skirt. They even added this great detail of side pockets, which are probably pretty hard to see here, but you can check it out on the blog. Um, I love a dress or a skirt with pockets because that's something you just don't see that often and ready to wear. And these are front and center. You can make a gathered pocket, which um, would show up a little bit better. Um, or you can do the flat pocket like I did. You could also do the skirt no pocket if you wanted to and just keep it simple with the seams. You can do a contrast of colors or a contrast of prints by doing the center panel in one fabric and the side panels in another. Again, the straight view was also really cute, but I wanted to go for all the drama with the mermaid fit. So check out Tie Dye Divas if you want to look into this pattern because it sews up really quick. Just a hidden elastic waistband. You don't even have to do a casing here. Just a cute, easy breezy skirt. Unfortunately, I can't find this next uh, item because it's been in my rotation so heavy. It's probably in the dirty clothes that need to be washed. Um, but this next pattern company that I uh, did a pattern test for was the first time I've worked with them as well. They're street style patterns. They're the same designers behind Brindle and Twig. If you sew a lot of children's clothes, you may know about them. But street style patterns is their women's line that they started here just recently. Everything in their collection are great basic staple pieces that a woman needs in her wardrobe. So tanks, bodysuit, t-shirt, t-shirt dress, joggers, sweatsuit, I mean sweatshirt, everything um, that they have are basics that you could definitely use in your collection. But what I decided to sew was the curved hem tank. This tank turned out great. It was a great fit. It was pretty true to size. I used an ITY knit, but you could use a jersey knit or a rib knit. Uh, you could use a heavier knit. Any knit that you have would actually work really well for this. It's a super easy pattern as it only has a front and back and then the, the bindings for the opening. So it's a quick sew. It doesn't use very much fabric and uh, their instructions are really well written. Um, 
it's just a great pattern. Also, Anita of Anita by Design made this as well in a rib knit. So go check out her website. Hers looks great as well. I think she loved it as much as I did. I saw the testing call for the Eden Jumpsuit by Designer Stitch in the Sewing Portfolios Facebook group. If you're interested in pattern testing, Sewing Portfolios is a great resource. It's an online site where you can show a portfolio of all your sewing projects so that prospective pattern makers or fabric makers or whoever else in the sewing industry can view your work and reach out and contact you for pattern testing or to to do whatever that they are, are looking for at that time. Also, you have membership into the Sewing Portfolios Facebook group where a lot of pattern companies come in and, re and call for their tester calls, which they don't always do on their social media that's available to everyone. So it gives you sort of a great insider nudge to have a greater opportunity to become a pattern tester. And when I saw the Eden jumpsuit and the inspiration picture, I knew I wanted to make this jumpsuit. Though it did have a couple of trials and tribulations, I originally wanted to make this with a white bodice and a navy bottom, but the navy fabric that I planned on using just did not work well. It was a different weight and a different texture than the bodice. Um, I thought it was a linen, but in the end, after working with it, I don't think that it was. And this is the same white linen that I used for the white uh, dress that I showed earlier from Fabric Mart, but the linen here at the bottom, the linen blend, is actually from Joanne. So once I realized that the other navy bottoms weren't going to work, I took it all apart with my seam ripper, went out in a rush, bought this fabric that had these nice white details so it pulled in with the white bodice and I actually like the way that this turned out so much better. You can read the blog post for all the details on the trials and tribulations I went through with that. But in the end, I really love this jumpsuit. When I wear it, um, a lot of people think it separates. And so that's the interest of color blocking. You could, of course, do it in one solid color, one solid print. It's great. Um, it does have a couple of interesting features that I had not seen before on a jumpsuit. So I did the self-tied belt, but you could wear it without the belt because there is an elastic casing here. But there's also a center back zipper um, and I've never seen a zipper with a casing before but it actually wasn't that difficult to sew because I thought well where the elastic meets and I have to do the zipper isn't that going to be a problem it was clear it worked out fine um, but it is a really cute look with um, for the summer and probably even for the fall if you just throw on a jacket To say that I was ecstatic about being chosen by Heather from Closet Case Pattern to pattern test this Fiona sundress is an understatement. I would think just about everybody who sews and from, is familiar with indie patterns knows Closet Case. Whether you've sewn the ginger jeans or the Claire coat or the new Jenny overalls, if you've been sewing for some time, you probably know who they are. So when I actually got the call back or the email back, to test their latest pattern, I was thrilled. Then they sent the image and it was the line drawing for the Fiona sundress, which included 15 buttons and woven fabric and, and patch pockets and some other details that I don't typically sew. But I was not about to pass up the opportunity to pattern test for a closet case. I also really loved the line drawing. It was just a tad bit out of my comfort zone. Um, because if you follow me, you know that I hate sewing buttonholes. I also work mostly with knit fabrics because I find them more forgiving as far as fit and I find them more comfortable to wear for everyday wear. However, this dress is just entirely too cute. So I got over my fear of buttonholes. I sewed 15 of them using the buttonhole stitch on my machine. Um, I did use my backup machine because I've posted about that. That machine definitely works better for buttonholes. I don't think the buttons that I picked actually did this dress justice because um, they're pretty cheap pat, uh, buttons from Joanne. So again, if anybody has a good online or in-person button resource, let me know because I wouldn't mind changing this out. But the pink actually went with the pink in this fabric. And this fabric is from Fabric Mart um, from a couple of years ago or maybe last year. I actually have sewn another dress in this fabric already. You can see it on the blog. But um, I love the way that this one turned out. So you have princess seam lines, 
You have a patch pocket that's integrated here on the side with some top stitching. This looks great in a classical denim where you can top stitch in the typical um, golden sort of thread so you can see all the details. I did do my top stitching in green, but because it's a very busy floral denim pattern, it's hard to sort of see that, especially this distance away from the camera. I'm trying to get the whole view in here. Um, so although I hated the buttons, I love the princess seams and the fit of the dress. And what really made the dress for me, I'll have to do some modifications here. Hold on one second, because I'm much larger than my uh, mannequin here. Pull that around. Was this back. I loved this open back detail that you have here. I love the crisscross, it's so simple. I love the way that it crisscrossed here in the back. Um, and then of course you don't have to worry about a back closure because you have the buttons in the front, but this back is gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Um, Heather did go back to the pattern and make some tweaks based on our feedback. And I haven't actually sewn the final version because that pattern's in the mail on the way to me now, but I will be making it again in the longer version. For those of you who are maybe heavier busted and you're concerned about having, you know, um, a support for the girls, they do have a bra friendly version as well where these straps come back and there's a higher back bodice. So if that's a concern, then of course you can sew that view. Um, I'm not that well endowed, but even with um, my size, I was able to get away with this without a bra. It's a very fitted dress. So that gives you some support. You could definitely add cups because what I actually did in this dress, and you can see the pictures on the blog, was I added a lining because this is definitely a denim, a medium weight denim, and I did not want, um, I wear this braless, I did not want that denim directly on the girls. So I actually ended up lining this, I don't know if I can open it up and show you, I ended up lining this with a satin that I had left over, incidentally enough, from my closet case uh, Claire jacket which I was really proud of that make. It was a challenge as well. But as you can see here on the inside, I lined it with some satin. So if you wanted to add cups, you could definitely do that with the lining. Like you could add the lining and sew in a cup. That could be something that you could do for more support. But I find that wearing it braless wasn't that big of a deal for me. But I, I could ramble on and on about this dress because I love it. Um, so much. I'm going to be looking for any excuse to make this that I can. I'm also going to be sewing the higher back version, like I said, with the side slits, the longer midi version as well. So look for that. That'll probably be in my fall makes or late summer makes. Um, I think that'll transition in the fall pretty well with the, with the clothes back and the longer length. I already have the fabric for that, but I still need buttons. So let me know about those buttons, people. This dress that I'm making is another I can make that dress. And by that I mean it's a dress that I saw, this dress on the dress form here, that I decided, hmm, I really like that. I can make that. So I did. This dress was actually gifted to me by my mother. I'm not really sure where she picked it up, but she's always picking up cute things. Um, so she didn't want it anymore or whatever, the reason I don't ask. She gifted it to me. What I really liked about this dress, and it may be a little hard to see in the video, is it has this sort of boat neck or bantu neck line, which I really like. So it's just sort of straight across to the shoulder seam here. It also has a front yoke that's accented with some piping. And then the bottom sort of has this border effect. It's not a separate piece. It's just a border knit fabric. It's like an ITY. So you can see that cute little uh, hint of the border here at the time. It also has some loose fitting three quarter length sleeves, which I like, but I wear this a lot during the fall and actually the winter with tights and a jacket um, because it's so comfortable. It's work appropriate, at least in my office, and um, I wear it to death. So ever since she gave it to me and I've worn it a couple of times, I knew I wanted to make more in my collection um, so that I could have more of this look. So I did not take this apart because I did not feel like it. Instead, I just laid it out flat and I traced it. You can see all the things that I did on the blog post here. If you search ICMY, which is our ICMT, which is, I can make that. 
Um, so this dress that I have on is actually that dress. And I'm sorry, I'm short, you can't really see it in the video, but I took the time to do the same thing. So you can see here, I have made a seam. I tried to make the same Bantown neck, but I could probably bring it out a little bit further for my next draft. Uh, I cut my border print ITY so that I would have this border here on the top. I have the body as a solid piece and I actually cut the bottom so that I could use the border print in a different way for the bottom of the skirt as or the dress as well. I actually lengthened this one because this one hits right above the knee and this one hits right at or just a slat bit below the knee. So I just love that about sewing is that I can see something, I can love it, and even though I can't go out and find this dress in every print they ever made it in, I can just make it for myself. So be on the lookout, this will be repeated. I will be making this again with the sleeves next time once fall um, comes around and I will have a ton of this dress. Last but not least is McCall 7577, or I'm sorry, 7757. This is a very popular pattern for this spring and summer. I wish that my body had been ready for this pattern. Um, it's not. So I added a couple of inches to the midriff of the top. And that plus the high-waisted pants sort of make it okay for me to get away with it. I'm in a place right now where I'm loving my body where it is as I work on getting it back to where I want it to be. So anyway, we're going to work that out. But I really love this pattern. It is super adorable. I love the double ruffle. Um, this fabric is a really cute graphic fabric that I got from Fabric Mart, of course. Um, I could not pass up on it. I bought it. I didn't know what I was going to make, I don't think, at the time. But when it got here, I was like, yes, we'll call 7757. So I made the top. I think I added two or three inches, check the blogs to be sure, to the bodice of this top. And then the high-waisted pants come up high enough that I only show a couple of inches of skin in between. This look has been so popular that even my sister has asked me for her own version. So she wants an Ankara print top, but without the ruffles. I actually think the ruffles really make it. I think it's so cute. I have not been confident to wear this out except for to take the pictures, but I am going to find somewhere to wear this uh, this summer. And um, the fabric's great. It has great drape. It hangs well. So if you were hesitant about making this pattern, don't be. Go ahead and pull it out. Add a couple of inches to the pants for a higher waist or add a couple of inches to the bottom of the top uh, hem if you need a little bit more coverage, but it's such a cute pattern. Well, that's it. That's everything I made for the second quarter. I think that was 20 outfits, so that's not too shabby. I'm gonna try to keep moving forward at that steam so I can knock out everything that I have in my summer plans um, before the cold weather hits. Thankfully, I live in the southern U.S., so it is warm here through October. I can think of quite a few very warm Halloweens. Go over to the blog if you want to see everything that I have planned uh, for the summer. Yes, I know that it's already July, but um, I'm very ambitious, so you can check out those items. Um, you'll notice if you go over to the blog post that I have these little computer sketches because I am not a person who can draw. If you're interested to learn how I make those, check out my YouTube video on how to create your own sewing mood board. And you can learn how to do that in either Adobe Photoshop, Microsoft uh, Paint, or Microsoft Word, I think I show you in. Um, be sure that you like and subscribe to the channel so that you can see all of my future videos. And please go ahead and subscribe to the newsletter and like or follow my blog, tipstitch.com. See you later. Bye.